In this presentation, we'll be going over an overview of some of the new features inside of Art Engine that can speed up your materials authoring workflow. We'll begin by exploring the Chrome Ball Capture technique, which allows you to capture fine surface details with minimal hardware setup. Taking our capture, we'll utilize the AI segmentation function to generate a black and white mask that can be used for a final alpha channel. So if you ever wanted to digitize a surface, such as foliage or fabrics, the Chrome Ball method is an ideal solution that requires minimal setup time. We will then jump into new workflows introduced in Art Engine specifically for those doing 3D reconstruction of material scans. With our new condensed tool set, we can directly drag and drop a reconstructed surface into the node graph, generate a baking surface with the unique plane generation tool, bake all the necessary textures, make hand adjustments with a material clone stamp, and lastly, utilize the direct Unity exporter for instant usage of your material. If you've ever been afraid of using photogrammetry for materials due to complex workflows, these new additions will make for a much more streamlined process. At the end of the presentation, we'll take a dive into the external execution node, which allows you to pass data in and out from Art Engine to external programs, thus extending the feature set of the node graph. This gives your team the ability to implement Art Engine into existing pipelines through the use of command line driven tools. My name is Victor Cam, and I am a senior technical artist at Unity, working directly with the Art Engine team. I have 15 years of experience working in the games industry as a model texture artist and instructor. You can find some of my work on AD Level, 3D Artist Magazine, and published courses on Pluralsight. I'm excited to showcase these new features inside of Art Engine, so let's get started. The process of photometric stereo capture generally requires a rig and very specific lighting angles. Art Engine already supports this workflow with its multi-angle detection node along with extensive parameters. For those of you who want to capture surfaces without the overhead of creating your own rig, we'll put together the Chrome Ball Capture Technique. This allows a user to capture with less rigid constraints while still yielding great results. But since the algorithm extracts lighting angles from the Chrome Ball, you can now be more forgiving with lighting angles during your capture. To use this process, it's as simple as placing the images in a folder with the corresponding mask to outline the location of the Chrome Ball. Inside of Art Engine, we can bring up the Chrome Ball node. You notice the parameters are quite slim, so all you need to do is input the path to the captured images and hit Execute. Right away, we process the albedo and normal map like so. Some of the available parameters are shadow compensation, which can reduce the amount of shadow left over, and normal gradient removal, which will even out the gradations in the normal map. Let's now look at how we can create an opacity map for this leaf. We can use standard color to mask techniques, but instead let's use the feature selector node. This will break up your image into segments, which you can now select by scrubbing over the islands. The size and shape of these islands can be controlled by the granularity, color, shape, and regularity sliders, which can control the type of selections available. Instead of selecting the islands manually, we'll make use of the AI segmentation feature. First, we'll need to supply at least two guide masks for the algorithm to work. I'll do this by using a mask paint and paint over large portions of the leaf. And also make sure to grab parts of the stem and just finish off with a few smaller strokes in tighter areas. I use another mask paint to indicate the background layer. It's important when using these guide masks to mark areas that are vividly different from one another, like areas of high contrast, especially areas where shadows are present like these. Now I can enable the assist feature and the selection is automatically generated for me. You can go back in and manually add or subtract areas as needed. I'll just execute the node to generate the final mask. To finish this off, we'll use a few standard blend techniques to fill in the background color, and use a blur levels combination to slightly smooth in a road or alpha mask. Let's compose this into a full material and input the correct channels. Lastly, we'll just generate a base roughness map from the albedo, an ambient inclusion map from normal, and check out our final rendered leaf inside the viewport. 
Of course, you're not limited to only capturing foliage. Photometric Stereo via Chrome Ball works great for a variety of surfaces capturing fine details. But what if you're scanning materials via photogrammetry? Let's have a look at that next. If you've ever done photogrammetry for materials, you'll know that the workflow often involves several applications to get them ready for your render engine. Recently, we've added a handful of nodes to ease the barrier to entry for processing surface scans. Let's begin at the reconstructed surface. This is the example that I'll be working with. It's a fully reconstructed surface from about 35 photos, and I've already gone ahead and exported the mesh along with its texture. I'm just going to drag and drop both of these directly into the Art Engine workspace. Now, instead of manually creating a bake plane, I'll utilize the plane generation node. This newly generated plane will act as my low poly or target mesh for baking. This node constructs an aligned plane automatically at the surface and will cover the extents of the input mesh and at each vertex determine the optimal midpoint location to avoid subtle gradients and other baking artifacts. This allows you to avoid the manual process of creating a baking surface, which usually involves a modeling application and manually pushing and pulling vertices into place. Now we can bring in the baker node input the source and target into correct slots, and also input the associated texture. With the common map selected, I can just bake my scan and begin processing my material. We can now start cleaning up our data as usual, so using the seam removal ignore function to fill in areas of missing data. Now, sometimes there's areas of the scan which are just too repetitive or unwanted. You can use the Mutation Revision node, which is an AI-based patch healing tool, which can regenerate a section based off your selection. Or, for a more manual input, use the Material Clone Stamp to fine-tune your results by working over the entire material stack. Before we bring this together into Unity, we'll just generate a roughness map and compose the material. Let's now get this inside of Unity. I'll go ahead and add an output node. Under Unity Export, I'll just choose Direct Link as the export type. For the path, I'll just point this directly into my Unity project and choose HDRP Lit as my render pipeline. And finally, hit Export. What this will do is convert your roughness into a smoothness map and then pack them into the appropriate Unity mask map. It will then export the bitmaps with the correct sRGB and normal map flags. Lastly, you'll automatically generate the material with assigned textures on the Unity side. So here we are inside of Unity, and my material is automatically created for me and ready for use without any manual setup work. At the beginning of this segment, I mentioned various software packages used to do a particular task. Let's finish off the presentation by understanding how we can integrate those packages into the Art Engine workspace. We at the Art Engine team understand that individuals and studios all work differently with various pipeline tools in the process. Because of this, we've introduced the external execution node, which can allow users to pass data in and out of Art Engine to external software. The external execution node, in essence, allows you to build your own node using command line functions. You can decide how many inputs and outputs that you like, and any tool that uses command line strings can be executed this way. Let's start off simple by opening up MS Paint by typing in the command MS Paint into the command field. On execution, we've loaded up MS Paint for painting. Next, let's use our input pin and input an image. We know that MS Paint can load an image by command line, so to get this working instead of Art Engine, we can simply put the input pin as a token, input 1. And now we have MS Paint loaded with the input image. Now, how can we make edits and bring them back into Art Engine? This is where the output pin's name comes in handy. This node works by pushing out data into a temporary folder with file names corresponding to the pin names. For me to bring back the edits back into Art Engine, I need to save the file the same name as the output pin inside the temporary Art Engine folder. So let's run the node again, and this time we'll do some edits and save it to our local app data folder. You'll see that my input resides here. And I'll just save it the name as the pin. So output one. I'll close the application and inside of Art Engine, we can see that our edits made it through. Alternatively, I can rename the output pin the same as the input. 
That way when we load MS Paint, make an edit, I can simply press save and jump back into Art Engine. Next, let's use a command string that utilizes both input and output pins and also add user parameters. For this example, I'll be using an application called ImageMagic, which has a host of command line processing tools. I'll first type in the command magic with the input texture using the input1 token and call the bilateral blur function. This function needs a user parameter width and height for blur. To create a parameter, we can create a token like this and call it size. Next, we need to bring it back into the temp folder, which can be called using the output token, which refers to the name of the output pin. Now the user can input the size of the blur in the field below and execute. You'll see that the result is a blurred effect over the bricks. For a more practical use case, I made use of Marmoset Toolbag's Python API to create a direct link into the application from our graph workspace. So if your pipeline is made up of existing software or in-house tools, you're now able to integrate Art Engine into your workflow with the use of the external execution node. This concludes our presentation for today. If you'd like more information, do check out our Unity Art Engine webpage, join us on Discord, and of course, any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.